Hey, Christine. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, good. I'm good. fasting now. I'm fasting for three days now. So today is my first day. Okay, and how did you find today? Uh, yeah, was actually good. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't really feel that hungry. I just always wanted to put something in my mouth. I yeah. had that. I'm putting something in. I missed that. Yeah. But hunger wise, actually good. Not yeah. that hungry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I found, I mean, I'm sure you've talked to Christian about it. I for me, I find um day three is the hardest, and sometimes even day four. Um, and from all the reading that I've done, normally day three tends to be the hardest for most people. And then once you get okay. over once you get over day three, um, it's fine. But I mean, it, in my experience anyway, it depends on how I am emotionally. It, there's so many factors yeah. that come into it. Um, so, yeah, and just, I, but I mean, it ha, I, I was talking to Christian about it on Saturday. It is, on a spiritual note, it's been yeah. profound completely yes. profound the long ones when i've done like the seven days and the 10 days absolutely yeah mind changing yes so yes. That, i would have to say out of everything all the reason that i now fast is that yes and the so last the last long fast i did i did a 10 day but i did i did five days water only i still drink black coffee I'll have okay. two, but one in the morning and then one sort of lunch time. Just again, yeah. I think it's just that, and I like coffee too. Um, yeah. So I'll have two coffees um, in the black coffees in the day. Um, where was I going with that? The last fast I did, I did five days water only, and then I ate once a day for the next five days, and and I also did that in silence, and that was. Um. It's I'm actually just sitting down and organizing something for Christmas time where because I've not done anything like it before where I want to get I have a couple of ideas that I had you in mind to ask you and while you're here I'll ask you that I want to yeah. do, I either want to do a walk down south so which it's either a three day or a five day walk I want to do it in yep. silence and and fasting. Yes. Or just go away somewhere. I've got a place to go or go away somewhere and do that. Do a fast and do it in silence because I don't know if you've done anything with silence, but, again, that's just something else that, again, is a complete yeah. been a game changer. Oh, yeah, wow. another level. Yes. Yeah, so no, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And just a yeah. few women together and... Yes, yeah. let's see how we go. I like, I like the walking idea because it gives you something to, to do. do. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then when, yeah. and then if someone has a meltdown, well, then we all just stop. <laughs> we'll just we'll set the rules up and go. Okay, if you got, if you need to stop, just sit down, and the rest of us will just sit. <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> okay, and then you, the woman can get up, and then we'll go. Okay, now it's time to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, good idea. Yeah. <laughs> So how has your week been? What have what your challenges been or what questions have you got? Um oh, Galaxy Six, that's me. I uh I think I went quite good this week. Um yeah. I made a thread a couple of days ago or three days ago. That was really good. Yeah, I heard. And um yeah, I think but I think I, with my day of fasting today, and we have done the measurements this morning, so I think I'm I'm really now really serious about yeah, it. So I, I think I had this week a bit to just to roll yeah, in a bit to to yeah. you know get my head around it as well. But I think with the fasting days now that I'm really yeah I'm I'm really in it as if that makes sense. Yeah, I think. Um, so. Yeah. And I got a few more ingredients. I bought a few things, you know, just bought a few things from that list, uh, which will make it easier as well. And yeah, 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 we have our fridge pretty much down to, you know, not a lot of ingredients, which is good. So to to stock up then on, on Sunday after my fasting with vegetables and cook some good stuff. And yeah, I think so far it's actually quite good. So 
Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, someone's chopping away. Who's chopping vegetables? Oh, that's Hi. me. Sorry. Oh, no, that's all right, Jack. I was going, who's chopping vegetables? <laughs> I didn't know if you could hear me or not. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't see you, Jack. Where are you? Yeah, I'm here. But uh, because I'm doing this as well, I'm just sort of, yeah, I'm just here. Well, you don't have to be a black thingy on the screen. Anyway, Jackie, that's Christine. So can you see Christine, Jackie? Yeah, I can. Okay, but Jackie, you can't see Jackie. She's got herself on trying to be quiet. Okay. <laughs> no, hang on, I'll find. <laughs> I'll try to mute myself. <laughs> no, you're good, so then you can listen. Jackie's also <laughs> done a bit of fasting as well, Christine. Christine was just saying, Jack, I don't know if you heard her, that yeah, I, yeah. Her day. I, Yep. Uh, tap in here. So yeah, and Jack. You can put your face on. Is someone else there? Yes. <laughs> Who's there? You're only about, okay, here we go. Oh, Nick, and someone's eyeball. Hello. Yeah, we're just, we're just, we're just, and Mara, we're just, we're just listening. So we're just, uh, we're new to all of this. So we're just uh, sitting in the background, just uh, paying attention to all of you who are uh, smart minds, uh, you know, festering away there. <laughs> Uh, and, and the chopping. And that's Jackie. She's, she's hiding because she's making noise. You're fine, Jackie. She's been at work all day. So. Well, I've got to, have, got to feed my child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I suppose, so Christine, did you then have any, quest any questions? Like what are you going to start, what are you going to finish your fast on? Do you know? Because it, it's good. It's good to have a plan. It's okay, I have no plan. Something that I something that I have found. Hi, hey, you going, Morris down there. Something that I have found is that I was talking to Christian about it on Saturday. When I'm doing the longer fasts, I I've made an agreement with myself that if I'm going to break the fast, I meditate first. So I sit for okay. an hour. So in my mind anyway, then I'm mindfully breaking it rather than, you know, coming into the house and jamming food in my house and in my mouth. And I haven't really, I've just given away. So that, yeah, so yeah. that might be something that you might, I would suggest make some rules around. Go if you get to tomorrow or Thursday or whatever and you are in a state where you're going to eat, is make yep. a commitment with yourself to go, no, nah, I'm going to sit and meditate for half an hour and make a conscious choice rather than an emotional choice to eat. Yep. Because yep. otherwise yep. the chance of finishing, your, you know, finishing it and then feeling bad, it was a failure, blah, 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 because yep. of the fasting yep. that I've done, and I think Jackie would, she has her own experience with it as well, there are times where it is better to end the fast. Yep. Because you're too emotional or Jackie's strangling her kid or, you know, it, <laughs> you're just not, you're not able to do it uh, with everyone else in mind, I suppose. So, yeah. That's yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah. And then when you break your fast, I don't think it's um, as applicable in the, in the shorter three-day fast, but maybe just be aware that eat, a, eat like 10 nuts first. Because the, when I when I did my first long one, I I went I, I'll eat ten nuts and I was really full from that. So I okay. can really imagine how much it would have hurt if I had a jam down a heap of food because yeah. your stomach's tiny. Three days probably not so much, but better to be on the safe side. Just eat ten or so nuts and then wait twenty minutes and then eat a meal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that sounds really. Yep. Yep. So, fellas, we're just talking about fasting at the moment anyway. Yeah, I was just about to say, um, I, I was listening and then um, I had to go and let Morris in. Um, you were saying something about that you fast but you still allow yourself to have a black co coffee. Yeah. Uh, things as such. It's not, it's not that sort of um, uh, strict that it's only water or um, fluid as such. Um, well, it's... It's still, well, it's water and coffee. I mean, you can, the, or there's the studies that are done, that the, the ones that I've read anyway, um, because coffee doesn't really have, other than a stimulant, it doesn't have a lot of effect. 
So it's not, it's essentially still a water only fast, but you're right. It's not a water only fast because it would be more of a challenge for me if I didn't have those coffees. So a clean fast. Yeah. If I was, if much, you go, sorry, Jack. Go. If it's, if it's just water, they consider that a clean fast. Yeah. But I mean, I, I couldn't have got through without coffee. <laughs> Yeah, because that was like, yeah. If I was like craving anything, yeah, um, I just I just grab a cup of coffee and I'd be I'd be fine. But yeah, um, there'd be other times that yeah, I I tried to go coffee. I think the first four days I went without coffee and it was just like, whoa, I can't do this. Yeah, it was just drawing my head in. Mm. And everyone has been different for me. Some have been, some have been a real, real challenge, and some have been relatively breezed through. Like some of them have been. I mean, it's such a good tool. I would never have imagined how um, useful over so many different other applications in my life fasting is. And it doesn't mean you have to do seven days, 10 days, doesn't mean you have to do water only. It might be that you do, it could be as simple as doing a 16 hour day fast every day. So not eating breakfast or, or dinner say. It makes the, the difference in my thinking is huge. And the difference in the amount of time in my day and, and it's a really hard thing I feel like it's a really hard thing to explain because I, w I wouldn't have believed it like I had a client that did a really long fast 80 days and I, I honestly if I didn't know this person and she was a friend and I trusted her and I even did question her you know are you blah blah are you telling pulling my leg here because it was beyond my um, it was beyond my imagination to think that someone could actually do that. So, and I mean, the longest recorded water only fast was 382 days. Yeah. And it's, it's mind boggling, but that one was monitored. He had, um, multivitamin, multivitamin, a big guy, you know, huge, big fat guy, massive guy. So, but, um, yeah, huge. I mean, and even in that, um, 12 months he only lost about 40 I think it was 40 or 50 kilos that's not really a great deal of weight to lose mm. such a long amount of time and not eating so but I mean for me personally I think the fasting has far more effect outside of losing weight did that make sense I think that mm. the fa 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 fasting is more sort of a sort of like spiritual, sort of like um, on the um, mental side uh, rather than the physical. The physical comes is a byproduct, you know, the weight loss, wouldn't you think? Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never done more than four days uh, in a previous life, uh, but, um, you know, that, that mm. had more effect on me psychologically, mentally, um, my outlook rather than physically, which... You know, you do lose a few kilos, but it was the um, um, that that yeah. sense of power over your mind uh, that um, drives you uh, yeah. uh, during and after you come out. Yeah, absolutely. I th I was just mentioning that to Christine before. Um, I did a, I think it was a seven day fast a few weeks ago, and yeah, it was just profound. Again, just really, really beyond words. It was just beyond words. T totally beyond words. So yeah, it's such a useful tool. Um, and I think um, you, I, you mentioned something, I'm trying to remember what you just said, Nick. Um, I found as much, it's still different, but I, and maybe a com, of course it would be a combination of the two, but even in how my understanding and how I feel like my physicalness has changed since I've been eating pl only plants massive difference like I went I went overnight I changed overnight I was eating meat one day and then I was eating dal the next day because that's the only thing I knew how to cook yeah so um and within two about two weeks I went from being really stressed like really tired I mean to be honest like um suicidal not it's something that I've struggled with over my life in a, if, a few different times a few different sort of breakdowns 
and I, I was still really quite struggling with it. Not super intense, but within two weeks of changing my food over, I can remember sitting on the couch at seven o'clock at night and just my brain saying, let's go for a run or go for a run. And I remember thinking, what's with that? Because yeah. I, there's no way I was dragging my feet. I'd finish work and I'd be a bag of poop for the kids mm. every day. Yeah, but I, that, 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 I think that's um, sort of like a, uh, well, not to go on a you know, medical sort of rant, but it's, it's sort of like proven, proven I think, uh, even in a past time when, when we used to, when Morris and I were training together years ago, um, I gave up basically gave up eating meat, um, found that you go from being lethargic and somewhat um, heavy laden to all of a sudden um, a lot lighter. Uh, just uh, everything feels lighter. It's as though you've, you've lost weight on the inside rather than, um, you know, ex externally. But it, it, it kind of gives you that, um, that power, that internal boost that um, for some reason I found um, eating uh, well, red meat mainly. I mean, I still kept eating uh, fish uh, and uh, a little bit of white meat, but not to uh, not to the same degree as I previously did. And uh, I think that made a, it does make a, a difference, um, you know, physically to to you as well as um, you know, I suppose psychologically. So oh, that's how it works worked for me in the past. I just don't have that willpower at the moment as yeah. I once did. And, and it's finding the willpower that has been my struggle, and that's the uh, that's the um, the force that um, I kind of need to to get to drive me again. Do you remember? Because I remember we were having this discussion, and I think this is a, a, a all round. We we were sort of talking about it the other day, Nick, when we were talking, mm -hmm. and I was just saying to Powers before we started this. I was just reading a book, and the guy was saying, um, oh, "You." You don't. Uh, you can't. You don't work towards peace. Peace is the way. So the point I'm trying to make is you can't work towards this thing that maybe you're calling willpower. You 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 have to practice it. You have to start doing it. So maybe yeah. for you it might be you might uh, make a commitment to yourself and go, okay, well, tomorrow I'm going to do this one thing. And then you, it's like building that willpower muscle rather than expecting that willpower muscle when your life is, you've got um, a kid to look after and, you know, it's a, different, it's a different life. Like you made reference to a life before. Mm, so it's, exactly. You know, Maybe, ex maybe expecting the willpower to look or feel a certain way is maybe being a little bit, um, I can't think of what word to use. Um, I, guess, I guess for me, it's, it's, it's um, <laughs> uh, continuity. That's the word. You know, you uh, sometimes start and then along, the, along your trail, you kind of tend to, um, you know, get sidetracked. Next thing you know, you're down a different path for a while and then you're trying to get back onto the, the path you were on and, you know, so, uh, which I think is maybe a common uh, a trait for most people, you know. So it's, uh, you know, for my battle, that's, that, that's it, you know. And I think like when we were talking the other day, and I think this is, this is key for me, to this, this is one of the main points for me is, finding your reason why and some people i mean we're all a little bit of both or a few different things but some people are externally motivated so some people might be motivated because they do it they want to see their grandkids so they go okay i'm going to change my life because i want to see my grandkids some kids uh, some people are more internally motivated and they're like well i want to do it so i'm gonna do it regardless and so it's i would suggest that the more your why might need to be broader than you because you might not be enough for yourself at the moment. So a why outside, my why, I'm a definitely externally motivated. My whys are outside of myself, most of them. So if you've yep. got a solid why, how do you feel about that, Christine? Um, 
<laughs> I'm I'm pretty similar to Nick actually, I guess. Like I'm a bit like on and off. Um I have fasted before. I know how how good good nutrition is good for me, but then always a bit backsliding and 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 then uh, and then it's like uh you, you, it's almost like a bit of battle and i think that's where fasting comes in and gives you a bit of breakthrough with the fasting to break through that battle of starting it again i know i have to do it but i think that's why i do this challenge as well mm. to actually do those barriers and and change it for good you know i want to change it for good because i know it is good for me when i eat plant-based uh diet i've done it before but then it's always it, it's yeah it's almost like it's it's almost like a bit an addiction to you know once you eat meat oh no it's too hard now to go back to the good nutrition <laughs> and it's like it's a bit of battlefield of the mind as you can say and i think that's why the fasting comes good in with breaking hopefully this this battle that's what i'm hoping mm -hmm. that i'm getting out of that fasting as well that i I break some of my of my thinking on 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 moving back into into that program, which is not too hard, really. It's, but it's it's probably in my mind. So I'm I'm I kind of understand what Nick was saying. I'm pretty similar there. So yeah, uh, I yeah. I think that um, just because of the different sorts of reading that I've done, um, there's not a, I believe there's not enough credit given. To the outside influences that affect us and um, I'll see if I can try to make this make sense quite quickly um, so I feel like in our society we've been taught to be well we've been taught I I'm responsible for my own behavior if there's a problem then it's me it's almost like um, when smoking all of a sudden became bad or just before it became bad say fat people people who are really overweight so people who are really overweight, at this point in time, we're still accusing them of being lazy or a glutton or they don't have willpower, they don't have this, they don't have that. Yet there's so many things that affect us from the outside that we have, again, this is not the right word, lack of better word, been brainwashed or we're so used to that when we are in our everyday life, there's pictures of food, there's, you know, there's, there's no um, value in resting. There's only value in doing. You should be doing. You know, if you're not doing, then it's not valuable. If you're sitting down, it's not valuable. It's almost like with exercise, unless even yoga. Yoga has, which it's still great, but yoga has turned into an exercise class. That's not yoga, that's just one arm of yoga. Yeah, so yoga is actually the whole kit and caboodle, you know, the mind, the body, the everything. But because in our Western world, we value the dollar, if I put it that way. So I just think there's not enough credit being given to maybe you're driving around in your day or we are in a consumering world so we're all consumers so we're working to buy things that we don't really need but we we think we need it is that sort of making sense so there's so many things that affect it that and the point i'm trying to get to is we then make it our responsibility i don't have the willpower i broke i this i'm not saying that there's that there's not a responsibility in there of course there's responsibility in there but i think I think if I, if like, even if I think about myself when we first opened the gym and I feel like the only reason I found it slightly easier was because I'd been dieting for 20 years, constant, uh, constant diet. So it was just a rue, it was a habit that I was in. So I found it, I wouldn't say easy, but I suppose relatively easy compared to other people. But that's only through practice. Yet, you know, if I like, if I reflect back and go, okay, here's this person. If we say, here's this person up at three in the morning, um, gets the house ready, goes to work, uh, back home at four or five in the afternoon, gets dinner ready, goes to bed, does it again seven days a week. And then would I not expect that person to break, to break their diet? And even if I tone that down a little bit and go a person that works even six hours a day, 
They then come home, they've got the house to look after, their bills to pay, there's all this stuff that impacts us that we then um, wear the, the, the sash to go, oh, I didn't. I didn't do it. And if we feel bad, what do we do? What do we do if we feel bad? We eat or we buy mm -hmm. stuff. And so it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't help either that the, um, like the fresh food and the, like the plant-based options are so more expensive than something down the aisle or go through Macca's or something like that. You know, for a quick meal, I mean, even with, with the kids and stuff, you can get seven or eight dollars and they go to meal, but you go to the shop and buy seven or eight dollars worth of food. You know, um, it just, I mean, it's, I think the, that's all, that's all wrong. Everything like that should be highly taxed, but all the fresh fruit and veggies and things like that should be like, mm. you know, a couple of you know, a dollar or whatever should be the easy, should be the cheapest option. So that it makes it easier so that we do try and do that for, for ourselves and for our kids. Yeah. And I think what you're saying too, Jackie, that's when, again, when the time comes into it, because if yeah. you've got the time, you can go to the spud shed or you can go like up the road, we've got this green grocer and it's, it's, I mean, like for, any, for example, they had today, they had in their 50 cent whole cauliflower. If I go to Coles, it's five bucks. Yeah. That's a massive difference. It's a huge difference. So, yeah, yeah, but if you're someone that's like, so say for instance, Jackie, Jackie's out of the house at bloody 6.30 in the morning, they're not home to maybe 4.35. How does somebody manage mm. all that every day? You know, and then we make it our fault, which drives us into eating the shit, buying the stuff, staying in the same place. So, it's, it, I mean, it's a whole thing. And even meat, like Jackie's, which, which Jackie's talking about, eating meat is about money. Animal agriculture is a massive, it's a huge power, massive power. And, and we, we just do it. Well, we're told that, you know, you have, that you, the only way that you can get protein and iron is from meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and calcium from milk and, you know, that's, a, and I mean, that's when I was growing up, you have to drink your milk to get calcium. You have to eat protein. You have to you have to eat tuna, and you know. I remember years and years ago when I was training, someone used to make me have a tin of tuna before I left the gym. That was me, people. That was me. <laughs> I wasn't going to name anybody, but you know, you know that was that was the, the <laughs> that was me the mind the mind frame that we were in, and you know, people are still in, and you know, three meals a day and two snacks and blah blah blah, and you know, micros and. Ugh. All, all that <laughs> and you know nick i would have to say the easiest when people come in and i this is this is I, I believe this i would have to say the easiest way to start would be to eat three meals a day and don't snack in between and just limit your animal products if that's what you choose to do you know if, if you if you want to eat it well eat it but if you were if losing body fat was something you wanted to do and and that more clarity if you only eat three times a day that's a for most people that's a huge improvement and i think um we were uh, yeah no 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 i i mean um I uh, I agree with what you're saying. I know that um, in um, for me, um, it's only sort of like since um, you know I've been in a sort of a uh, how should I put it family uh, unit where I'm eating uh, three times a day. When I was um, on my own, basically I never had breakfast or lunch, and used to just eat uh, you know like a two course meal of the evening after I get back from the gym or. Mm. Or, uh, or when Morris was living with us, with us, you know, um, we'd be training for a couple of hours, get home by about sort of like eight o'clock at night, and um, you know, maybe just um, uh, <laughs> boil a kilo <laughs> of pasta or something to get to get to get a boost back or whatever. But uh, as strange as it seems, that's um, uh, probably um, was the leanest and fittest uh, was during that period there. So I think. Um, knowing your own body is obviously crucial, um, and everyone being different. Um, that that said, though, I mean, I do um, I do think that 
you know, society uh, has changed significantly over the last 30 odd plus years that it's become so much of a, uh, a throwaway slash takeaway uh, convenient set up so that, you know, as Jackie said, you know, for a dollar fifty, you can buy your hot dog, your drink, and your dessert ice cream instead of, uh, you know, having to spend six dollars and half a cucumber and three quarters of a cauliflower. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, that that said, though, I know that when I have, you know, said, well, I'm 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 doing it, um, the cost factor becomes sort of like yeah. secondary. Um, yeah. But that's easy easy to say if you don't have family of six or seven at feed, you know, because as you said before, so many factors come into our everyday, uh, you know, routine and existence that um, all of that's got to be factored into things as well. Um, as, you know, as you see, I mean, I come in there some mornings at 6.30 as I finish my night shift and uh, may only last half an hour or 40 minutes, but it's, it's that desire to still you know, force well, force yourself might not be the right hmm. words to use, but it's you know to push yourself um, because I think I've always been a believer that better to have tried and fail, although failure you know you don't really want that, but to have that sort of uh, mentality where you you know pick yourself up and you go and you just continue on as you said, like that seven day routine, you know, getting up at three o'clock in the morning. People do it because once you you know, you tell yourself you can, uh, there is nothing that you can't achieve. Are you listening to what you're saying here? <laughs> sounds, like, <laughs> sounds like willpower there. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like willpower to me when you've worked all night and you go to the gym at 6.30 in the morning and you make yourself go. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah, you, 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 know, you, know, you know the consequences of not doing it and that that is... A, a, great, a greater incentive, you know, the the, the knowledge that, um, you know, if you don't, then you, you know, it's a, it, you won't. It's it's a little like saying, oh well, I'll, um, oh you know, I've got to clean up around the house and go, yeah, well, I'll just sit down on the couch first and I'll do it later. You know, if you put your foot or your bum to that couch, you're not getting up again because once you allow your body to relax, um, <laughs> you're staying there. So you got to get in, do it, and then reward yourself. After the fact, so wow, well, um, sounds like you've got a bit of willpower to me there. <laughs> oh, listen, I, I listen, I, I, I know I do because you know, 30 something odd years ago, I dropped 40 kilos in nine months and I kept it off for the next 30 years. So, you know, and that that was willpower and that was uh, the desire, external, internal, however you want to describe it. But was um, it willpower will or habit? Was it, it, became, it became it became habit. You know, it's like it's like any sort of you know, all once vices are now habits. But you know, uh, it became one. You know, and it, when when something important gets brought into your daily routine, then that it becomes normal. That is your routine, the same as getting out of bed and washing your face or having a cup of coffee, whatever. Once you bring that in to the norm, it's not that hard. And, and therefore, you know, it still requires willpower, but it's less willpower because it's more yeah. the norm and you do it. You just do it's it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to find, I'm just trying to find my norm. <laughs> <laughs> Keep looking. <laughs> Keep looking. Um, some of the things, we, I think we're going, we're going to get into it in the next fortnight, but some of the things that I think are really important or have been really important for me and for others is to start to define what your food rules are. So um, probably I find maybe the easiest way to explain that is just by telling what some of mine are. And of course, every, we all have them anyway. Like some people might have ones, I was writing some down, um, I don't eat Brussels sprouts. That's a food rule. Yeah, so that's a rule. Or I eat, I only eat McDonald's or whatever. I only eat that pasta or I only eat that meat or I, yeah, so we all have food rules, but a lot of the time I think uh, sometimes we go, oh, I don't want to make food rules. I don't want food rules, but we all have them anyway. So let's say for instance, some of the things that really keep me safe, I use the word safe or strong, or it just ends the discussion is 
I, some of my food rules are I, only, I don't snack in between meals, so that's one food rule. Um, I only eat when I'm sitting at the table. Take me back two years ago, I would be eating and driving, yeah, because I was so busy and I had so much on, so I'd be eating. I was never consciously eating or I'd jam my food in, so now I have an agreement that I sit at a table or, you know, I sit, we're at a park or whatever, but, you know, predominantly I'm sitting and I sit at a table and I'd be grateful for my food. Um, what, another food rule is I don't buy food out unless I have planned it. And I, that one really, really works for me because I can be out and about. I remember there was one time about 12 months ago and I took Mary Jane to some place and there was food everywhere. So all these smells were assaulting my senses. But that rule really kept me safe because I just went, no, I'm not buying food because I'm out and about. And some of the reasons that I do that, one, it costs, you know, it costs so much more to buy food. The food that I'm eating, I know is nowhere near as good quality as the food that I make at home. Um, so that's so I might be in the shopping centre and I'm hungry, but probably too because of the fasting, I know I'm not going to die. Whereas like two years ago, I thought, you know, if I miss that one protein meal, I don't know what I actually thought was going to happen, but something really disastrous was going to happen. Well, I did. I used to think I'd get fat and now that makes me laugh because I think, we are told you need to eat more to weigh less. I go, well, that I'm no good at maths, but I bloody well know that doesn't add up. You don't eat more mm. to weigh less. <laughs> you eat less to weigh less. It's very, very simple. You know? Or you go back to your, you imagine you going back to your great, great grandmother and, she, and you know, you say, oh, I'm fat. She'd say, stop eating shit. Stop eating sugar. Is really what she'd say. Stop eating sweets. Stop eating the heavy, the, the processed carbs. Um, I'm trying to think of other rules. I've got, there's quite a few rules. Um, oh, I don't eat animal products. So that's, that, that's a, that again keeps me safe. Um, I mean, there's a few, but how does that, does that help you, Christine? I feel like food rules will probably, especially things like driving in the car. You know, yeah. In between. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I, I think it's some really good ideas. Um, yeah, I've already thought on on what what I can implement as well as food rules as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really good ideas. Yeah. Um, yes, because when when you are like this in between snacking, they can become a bit of. Um, yeah, a bit of, you know, it's very tricky sometimes when you don't have so, so much time to eat or you're busy and and then and then you, you feel like, oh, I'm hungry, I need to eat something, so otherwise I'm going to faint. That's what, that's what I always think, I have to eat something, otherwise I faint. It's probably similar to getting fat, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and, and then I just eat something quickly to... So, so that I don't faint. I mean, I never fainted anyway before. So <laughs> this is just in my head again. But mm. I think it's it's a good. To, I think for me to maybe make those rules and maybe eat those three meals and then and then even not even thinking about those things anymore. So, mm. yeah, no, it's de definitely helpful. Yeah, and the, the lightheadedness, as you'll, it, I'm sure you'll probably experience as you're fasting, the lightheadedness goes away because it's, it's because we're used to having food, say you're having it, even if you're having it three times a day or say you're having four or say you're having five meals a day, it, it keeps us in that high sugar yeah, we've got, yeah. We've got, yeah, so you, you eat, your sugars go up, they go down, you start to feel a bit wobbly. So you eat, your sugars go up, they go down, you start to feel wobbly. So I used to think, I used to get the shakes and I used to get ups, you know, yeah. emotional and I'd be like, oh my God, I need to eat, I need to eat. And all of that disappears once you go for um, the longer, once you get used to, once your body starts, it starts to switch over from just using carbohydrates to using carbohydrates or sugar, using sugar, and then they'll dip into fat if if you if it needs to. 
depending on how much food you're eating. So if you're eating too much food, well, you're not going to dip into your fat stores. But you find that fine line, whether you're eating three times a day, two times a day, one time a day, and your body will slowly start to um, start to work better, basically. It won't just be running off sugar because in in the Western world, most of us are running off sugar because we're co it's like we've constantly got money in our wallet. You never need to go to the bank if you've always got money in your wallet. So if I've always got food in my mouth, if there's always food in my stomach, there's always glucose in my body. So it's like my wallet's full, so I never need to access that, that bank. So it's not until, and the thing you've got to, because when I eat, I eat sugar. Well, basically, I'm eating food. It turns into energy, which is glucose, turns into sugar in my body. Um, so, and then that circulates through my blood and through my muscles and things like that. And then that's got to be used up. And then after that's used up, before fat gets used, you've, your liver has to empty out as well. So your liver makes glucose. Yeah, it stores glucose and makes glucose. So if you want to touch your fat stores, if you want to go to the bank, you've got to use the sugar up, the glucose up that's in your blood, and then you've got to use the glucose up that's in your liver, and then your um, fat will get converted into the liver and then into the blood. Make sense? Mm. So you've got yeah. to empty all that out first. Yeah. And it gets better and better and better at doing it. So at first, so say maybe you do, say you decide you're going to eat twice a day, you're going to fast for 16 or 18 hours a day or something. It might take you, I mean, of course, every body is different, but it might take you three months. It might take you six months. I don't know. It could take less. It might take your body that long to one, learn to learn that it's, there's not going to be that constant flow of sugar in and then it starts to work more efficiently. Your body starts to burn body fat. Yep. But when there's constantly glucose coming in, sugar going in, it won't. Why would, why would it? It doesn't need to. It doesn't need that's, to. that's why it's probably best to do a workout in the morning too. Absolutely, absolutely, Morris. And and yeah, I think you burn all that sort of. You've already done the fast by sleeping, mm. and then you kick the metabolism kicks in up or during the workout and continues on until after lunch. You know. Yeah, and I have to say, with my my training is so much better when I'm fasted. So much better. It's, but then it's not in saying that I think as I've been doing the fasting for longer, um, but then it's, I mean, I'm most, I can't eat any more than two times a day anymore. I'm too full. Yep. If I choose to eat early, like on a Sunday morning, we'll have breakfast and we have it relatively early. So we have breakfast and then I can't eat again. Or if I was to eat lunch, there's no way I'd be able to eat dinner. Whereas I would never, never, and a lot of the reading that I've done too, um, the, the, and it's my experience, I'm, I function, I'm noticing that I'm functioning with more energy with less and less calories. And yeah. it, it's less and less. I eat so many, um, so less food now than what I used to eat. And also it's, it's light on the calories. Because it's, how I, much how much water do you have to drink too? That's the water, other thing. I've, water. Um, I judge my water by the colour of my pee. To be honest, so I go if my yeah. if my pee's clear, I go okay. I'm obviously drinking enough water. I reckon I'd have to drink a minimum of three liters a day. Less yeah. in winter, I, I find it a lot harder in winter time to drink water. But three, I drink a litre sort of before I'm up early or up early, like about four, just before four, I'd drink a litre before, I don't know, probably six yeah. o'clock. And then I'd have at least another two litres during the day at least. Um, but, yeah, I judge it rather than try to stick to a – because some days I just can't drink it. Some days I find it really hard to drink. So, again, I just judge it by the colour of my pee. If my pee's clear, I'm assuming that – I've got I'm hydrated enough if it's not if it's if it smells if it's really yellow well then I'm 
I use that as nap. You've got to drink some more water. So, but yeah, rather than putting a eight uh, uh, and uh, two liters on every person type thing, and again, that will change with the more plants you eat because you, there's more water in the, in those foods. The plants you get water from those foods won't need as much water. Mm. So, but yeah, I mean, like I, I just think probably judging it by when you do a pee is probably the easiest way for each individual person. And then I suppose you just have to watch if you're taking vitamin B or something like that, that's maybe going to make your pee really yellow would, would be the only yeah. thing to, to watch. Um, but that's, Chris, just, that's just a different colour. Yeah, well, it's fluoro, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Maybe well, you really yellow. need to drink a <laughs> <the> green wee. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a few considerations, Christine, that you do while the science says it's really quite clear on at this point. It's vitamin B12. So vitamin okay. B12, they say that's that's probably the one thing that you need to take, but they're actually saying that um, anyone over 50 needs to take it now because um, that's from a bacteria. So it used to come from the ground, but hence our veggies are also clean. Uh, we get it from meat because meat's full of bacteria, bad bacteria. So that's why people who eat um, meat, they don't, nest, they don't generally have a problem with vitamin B12. Super important for kids. Kids die in a matter of weeks, apparently, without vitamin B12. Um, so that's where some um, vegan parents of such have got into trouble because um, the kids have, not many, but that, that's apparently um, because, yeah, it kills them in weeks, a few months, 12 weeks, they can. So vitamin B12, um, there's two different types. I can't remember the names because they're about a whole alphabet for, full of letters. I'll, e, I'll put it, I'll email it to you, but there's one that starts with C and one that starts with M. The, the okay. one that starts with C, cata, I won't pretend to say it. Like I said, the one that starts with C, that's synthetic. And the one that starts with M, that's, that's more natural. So they reckon that's a better way to go. Um, okay. Another thing is iodine. So there's probably the simplest way to get iodine is just with your old-fashioned table salt. Your dollar table salt, you get it in that big, that's got iodine in it. Whereas a lot of the new salts don't have it because for some reason we've, you know, we think iodine's bad, so we've cut it out. Mm. So, um, yeah, and that's not to go stupid with it, but I think it's, a, it's about 2,000, 4,000 milligrams a day, which is basically a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So that's quite a lot of salt if you... Yeah. You know, when, when you put, it's easy to eat salt in processed food because it's all covered up with sugar and salt and all the other jive. But when you tip it on top of your food, it's harder to eat lots of salt. Um, yeah. Iodine. Oh, vitamin D, but being in this environment, unless you had a problem with vitamin D, you probably, or you were inside a lot. Vitamin D is mm. another good one. But if you, um, again, the recommendation is, 15 to 20 minutes three times a week on your major, yeah. like your arms and your legs type thing is enough. But yeah. that's, that's mostly talking about northern places that are cold, where you came from, Christine, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> yep. So you're saying I'm going to have to reduce my time at Swanbourne. I'm getting too much sun. Means <laughs> <laughs> you're getting all over, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Just cover up. Yeah, just wear a sock. Just wear your sock. Don't, don't want to scare the fish away. Um, oh, I bet they see some sights down there. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, okay. All right. Well, um, yeah, it's definitely um, definitely been informative, and I guess um, we're getting. Yeah, I saw your. Um, well, I didn't. Uh, I saw some of your. Um, sorry, your email. So uh, that's good sort of knowledge to have in the bank there to mm. refer to. Mm. Um, so it's, all, it's all a matter of, um, you know, practice. Practice. It yeah. is practice. And repeating. And I reckon practice. the only reason, like I said, the only reason 
Oh, like I had um, a client come over and we made bread last week and I showed her my freezer. Yeah, and it's got, we have to have 120, 130 meals in there. But, you know, for mm. someone to probably look at initially, they'd either think, oh, she's really anal or, oh, my God, how do you do that? But that's like 20 years' worth of practice. Mm. Like it's mm. just the practice. Like I've been, I've been, diet, I've been dieting for... I've been dieting for the past 20 years. I've been competing for 20 plus years. I've been dieting mm. for that long and that's just practice. And I yeah. don't think it would have been, I would be doing what I was doing now without having had that practice. I don't know, but I'm guessing it took me bloody yeah. five years to get over chocolate. Yeah. So you know your body now. Mm. Oh, but in saying that, Morris, when I change my diet and it's still, it, 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 it can, it, my, as you can probably tell by the way I'm stuttering, I had no idea how effortless it is. Now, I don't exercise now. I maybe do a workout once a week if I'm lucky, twice a week if I'm lucky, and it's half there. I just move these little weights around like a girl. I am a girl, but, you know, I used to train like, like a hard. Um, mm. And I don't, I exercise, I reckon I exercise, <laughs> I reckon I exercise five percent to what I used to. It's never been as effortless. I've never been as lean. It's never been as easy, and I wouldn't have believed it. Mm. And I only stopped trying to control my weight with exercise because of opening the gym. I was forced mm. into it. Otherwise, I would still be exercising for a minimum of two hours a day, every day. Mm. So it, I can, I, and it's something that, I, like I said, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. But it's not about the exercise. Being lean, it's got nothing to do with exercise. Nothing. Mm. Being strong yeah, yeah. and being fit, exercise, yes. Being lean is food, 100%. 100%. Which is good. Mm. Well, mm. it's good when you get it. Mm. It's hard when you're trying to find it. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, very difficult. Yeah, right. uh, well, oh, well, that's that, that's good. And I have to um, find it. Excuse me. <laughs> It'll just be where you left it, Nick. You have to go find it. <laughs> Do you pray? Just pray for it. Meditate on it. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Any questions, Christine? How are you feeling or what's, what do you need? Do you need anything to get through the next few days? Um, well, the no, next two food. days, what do you need? Days? Nothing, no food. So I'm, I'm all good, just water. No, I think food. Um, I'm, I'm reading your emails as well and I'm, as I say, like I'm just getting really started in it and and look for some recipes and and the right ingredients and um i i kind of like the pace so i'm i'm going at this at this stage so it took me a little while to get into and i started the fasting today yeah and uh, but i think it's a good it's you know it's the perfect timing to to get into and as you said i think it it obviously that's why I guess you have it for 60 days as well, the challenge, because it's not, it's not changed overnight. It's not changed in a week. And, and, and I kind of like that because it gives me some time and yeah. I don't put another pressure on my life to change. Those, yeah. You know, yeah. Because there's already, as you said, so many forces from outside and stresses or this and that is coming in. And I don't want to put another stress on that as well. So, which is actually good. So with that challenge, it actually, doesn't actually stress me out. I have to lose five kilos in five weeks or in two yeah. weeks or whatever. What you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's really good. It's no stress, and I like it really. Yeah. So so I'm I'm kind of going. You know, every day I'm trying to do something, um, and and read or you know look for another recipe or another ingredient or what can I do tomorrow? What can I make today better? So. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really good. That's good. That's something that I completely forgot to do. There's probably two, no, 
YouTube channels for cooking is the Happy Pear. So just okay. Happy P E A R. It's two um, brothers, two vegan brothers. So, and I mean, of course, I, I just say to people who would who want to eat meat, will just add meat. But the recipes they they must have eighty odd five minute recipes. So they're really okay. Easy. Um, they've got there's heaps, hundreds and hundreds of recipes. They're really, really good. So the Happy Pear, the Whole Food Cooking Show. That's another one. She's got hundreds and hundreds of recipes on there. Um, the Whole Food Cooking Show, she's actually no oil. So she's really good. And again, if you want to use it, well, use it. Um, who else off the top of my head? Um, McDougal. John McDougal, if you just punch him in, I can't remember what it, but if you just punch in McDougal, he'll, I think it's called the McDougal Plan, actually. Um, then there's also Plant Nation, just P-L-A-N-T-N-A-T-I-O-N. That's another one. So, I mean, even with just that three or four different um, YouTube channels, there's, there's no way you'd be able to cook all that food. Yep. And I think, too, something that um, I think lightens the load is most people tend to only have four to ten recipes that they eat at one time anyway. So you've only yeah. really got to replace those. Yeah. So yes. Indian food, most Indian food is vegetarian and a lot of Indian food is vegan because you just replace the um, dairy products with coconut. So it's really, it's just that, like, it's just that different uh, tools, that different learning in your brain. So, um, and the curry mix, I don't know. On the web, the, we're having some real issues with the website. It's not working. So I'll send out another email tomorrow and I've got a base curry mix. I got it off a, um, an Asian woman. Fantastic. And that's the one curry mix but then I just change it like that. It's the same. They have the same curry mix and then they change it by either using beans or lentils or tomato or um, coconut cream or more onions. Or So really that one base, it, it must do probably eight different, it easily eight, 12 different curries and they taste completely different. So I was mm -hmm. really quite amazed so now I've just got this one curry mixture that does it does my dals it does my vegetable curries my coconut curries heaps heaps and the lentil hey, Chris, loaf, sorry Morris go on no it's all right let you finish mm -hmm. I'm just saying and the lentil loaf for our family anyway that's another one that does so many different things because um I've got a wide oven so I make it up in these big um commercial trays make it up, then just let it cool down, chop it up, wrap it up individually, and then there's 60 serves of a meal. We also turn that into pies, sausage rolls, patties. So it's just that when it comes on the plate, it's the same, it's the goddamn same food, but it's just presented differently. One day with rice, one day with half a butternut. Beans are full of protein, just your normal broad bean. It's like... A hundred, half a cup of broad beans, it's got 26 grams of protein. It's the same as meat. Mm. So it's, it's, there's heaps. If you just want to find your main meals and then, yeah, and then you, then you yep. just play around with other stuff when you want to. Yep. And I mean, you're married to a man that'll eat the same crap every day, five times a day, Christine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> what were you going to say, Morris? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, what about this big thing at the moment with juicing, you know, like green juices and all that sort of stuff, you know? Is that just a bit of hype or is that a quick way to get your uh, vitamins from your veggies or do you just prefer the whole food? Um, it depends. Um, juicing is good. Um, I'm not a real juicer because I like to eat. That, it's that simple. I like food. I'd rather eat it than drink it. Um, juicing is good. The only 
the thing, and I don't know how true that is, this is, but it does make sense to me, is that if you've not got a good quality juicer, if you're, yeah. so like if you've got, if the juice is going into one container, your glass, say, and all the, all the other, the pulp and stuff is going into another, you're losing, you're losing a lot of the nutrients in that. So you do lose nutrients unless you've got a really good juicer. Um, of course, you could use, even using a Nutribullet or such, again, I don't know how true this is, but it makes when I'm reading, I go, yeah, that's possibly true. When you're using, say, something like a, a Ninja or a Nutribullet, apparently it's so rough, the machine is so yeah. rough that it breaks. It, 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 it just pulls all the yeah, yeah, you yeah. lose nutrients that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, and too with juicing, if you, if I, if I was to juice, I would be having just predominantly vegetables. Whereas I think a lot of us going from heavy product diet, so lots of salt and lots of sugar, it's an easy transition, not a, not a healthy transition to go on to fruit. And if, yeah. You, yeah, if you happen to have um, an insulin problem, which oh, so many people would have, I reckon they reckon easy 60% of the population would be insulin resistant at, at the moment. So if you're someone that, that has that and you start eating food, fruit, you're sort of just replacing one for the next. It's definitely better, but mm. still, I just think, and fruit as in nutrients, apples, oranges, pears, um, all those may be f the fruits that my brain would come up with that I'm used to, mangoes, things like that. They are not really that high in nutrients, not when you compare it to kale, spinach, mushrooms, beans, lentils nuts, things like that. You're going to get much more bang for your buck with your vegetable plants than your fruit plants, unless you're so, berries. So with fruit, you don't. Need, you should really limit your intake, like to say two pieces or something? Or? Well, I think yes. Um, if it's, I'm not, I probably eat fruit. I might eat fruit once, twice a week. I, I found the longer that I've been doing it, even now, and again, I wouldn't have believed it, even now fruit is too sweet. Sometimes like eating a whole apple, it's still, like I had a banana today and my, my teeth hurt. And, mm. and I was like, wow, that's really, that's really amazing. Um, but yeah, in answering your question, I probably think that you're better off heading towards plants and, yeah, maybe you have a couple of pieces of fruit a day if you enjoy that. I mean, again, it's got to come down to you've got to enjoy this. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to enjoy it. And if you're missing out on eating some fruit, I'm like, well, hell, eat your banana and eat your apple. Okay, it's not really, I can't see how that's going to be bad for you if you're eating, mm. you know, good, a good quality food as well. Yeah. You know, we've just been so confused over food. We've been so confused yeah. over food that we don't even know if if fruit is good for us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it just keeps us um, relying on packets that say all natural or blah, 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 blah. And it, it, this is one of the questions that got me started and got me really interested because I, myself included, I would have all of these really intelligent people and I... I I was no good at school. I was no good at school. And I'd have all these really intelligent people and still do sitting there and asking for my advice and I'm going, just eat food. Just eat food. Don't eat products. But we're so confused or we're so stressed, you know, what a combination of all of these things that we can't see that if maybe that if all we did was eat food that's closer to being alive, and something that comes out of the packet that, that you know that there's this disassociation here with you know health comes out of a packet and it's really clever and it's really fine because that then does i believe translate onto health comes in a pill i can just take my multivitamin 
And the supplement industry is a massive, multi-trillion dollar industry. It's got nothing to do with health. I'm not saying that they're not relevant in some cases, but as a broad cover, do we all need a multivitamin? And a lot of us, I think myself included back, was I would, I would do something or take something or try to do like exercise to make up for bad habits in my diet. I didn't want to change my bad habits. So I might go, well, because I'm eating these foods, I'm going to take a vitamin B. Or because I'm doing this. So the way we think in the Western world is we want to add stuff. Because if we all want to add something, we're much easier to be sold. Because if I say, if everyone all of a sudden, if it came out, the powers that be, the government went, you know what, you're all a bunch of unhealthy fat bastards, cut things out. What happens to, what happens to the way the world works? Uh, in, 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 a, in a money way, in an economic way. It stops. Even the game industry. Because I think to myself, if everyone just ate predominantly real food, you're not going to need to go to the gym. Mm. really not as many people you're still going to have your hardcore people that really love exercise and i think exercise is vital i'm not disputing that but there would be more people than not at the gym trying to lose weight than be there because it it, it makes their heart sing yeah it's good for them that you know it there's been more people there begrudgingly, I, you know, making that I have to go because I, I have to go because I'm going to party on the weekend or I have to go because I partied on the weekend. You know, like, look good, yeah. yeah, well, it comes from a more negative place, you know, and I'm, men would be similar but not as much. Women go to the gym to not be fat and I'm like, that is the wrong headspace to start with. Wrong headspace because we go where we're headed. Mm. It's an interesting concept, eh? Yeah, but that's 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 how the gym concept works, I suppose, or whatever. But it's also like to say, yeah, you go to the gym, train because it's um, you know, to, to um, you know, relieve the guilt mm. of uh, what you've done or what you're about to do. And exercise is a really recent thing. It's only like 30 odd years old. Before the mm. 70s, there was no exercise. They, in fact, they told you in the 60s it was bad to exercise. If you had a heart attack, you were laying down, no exercise. And the 70s, all of a sudden, out we come with our G strings on the outside and we're all rebocking it or whatever. But before then, exercise wasn't, well, it wasn't. We didn't exercise and we weren't fat and sick we, we've never exercised as much and we've never been as fat and sick so yeah. that, that's that, that doesn't make sense yeah. you know there's no there's no money and again not meaning it as a conspiracy but in the way our society works there's no money in us being healthy there's no money Society would society would struggle if all of a sudden we became we all became well, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, well, you know the health industry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, you know, at the end of the day, I guess everyone's doing it for their own reasons. You know, whether it's guilt, or whether you know it's for um, maintenance, or whether it's um, whether it's or whatever the reason. Or whether um, it's because we've been told to. Or we, we, we've been to you know, we do, we basically do what we're told. It's funny, we went to, we went to a vegan expo and this one vegan said, I don't want people to tell me how to eat. And I had a little internal giggle because I said, you eat as you're told. We all eat how we've been told to eat. What's so, happening here? It's just, yeah, it's clever. It's really clever. It's all about, you were saying it earlier, Christine, it's all about this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working in the industry. I see it all. I, I see it all. Um, hello. Hello. Product development. And they do the marketing about products. But it has 
nothing to do anymore with with the food mm. it's, it's yeah well you're in it yeah uh, it, the, the the food is is the last bit that goes into the packaging. So it's all more about how can we market this? What can we claim? What claim can we put on that one? Mm. You know the, the 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 sixth claim on the packaging that no one understands anymore. The labels and all those things. So the the food is the last thing that goes in really. And mm. uh, and uh, yeah, it's 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 all. It's all driven by marketing, and it's never enough. Or we, we create something better, and we add we add protein, we add vitamins, and take out the fat now, and we take out the sugar, and we we put some artificial sugar in there, makes it healthy. So there's so much going on in that food industry as well uh, that makes you believe, as you say, like, oh, this is the way to go now. And and there's Jackie said as well. It's so it, they make it so cheap uh, yeah. that it's you get like these meals for for your family really cheap. Um, and and there but there is actually nothing in there that's of value for your body. Yeah, well that's like that was like Jackie was saying, you know. And there's a there's a quote. I can't remember exactly what. Yeah, it's I mean, that's <laughs> question not why food is um why whole food is so expensive but why cr cheap food is so yes. and it and it's all to do with because it's externalized you know so mcdonald's or all of the companies that you work you get to see working all of their all of their costs are externalized yeah you know and that's that's huge that's huge and that's that's not okay yeah you know, so that, like we said, that $2 burger, that doesn't cost us $2. Not even close to $2. So, and it was like when um, I was, we went to this thing on the weekend and the woman was saying something along the lines of about, you know, what she eats um, is only of impact to her. It's only affecting her. And I just went, no, it doesn't just affect you because they're not meaning her personally. I said, but if you get sick and fat or whatever sick and or fat together you are a drain on the health care i said so then you're not only a drain on you you're a drain on everybody and i mean look at america's health care it's gonna it's about to fall over because it just can't sustain all the sick people so what they're doing what the individuals are doing and i don't mean to be blaming them because i think that comes down to a whole lot of other things is that's it's everybody's responsibility. No, so there's this is just so much. I mean, I find it fascinating. So much that comes into it. It's got nothing to do with food. Like I think you were just saying that it's got nothing to do with food. It's got to do with business. How yep. society works. Yeah. I mean, sorry, Jack. Sorry, um, I saw something on, I think it was Instagram or Facebook today, and it was um, two packets of Fruit Loops. One was American and one was Australian. Did you see that? No. Nah. And the difference, the difference in product, uh, the difference in uh, the ingredients was humongous. Mm -hmm. Like what Americans had and what Australians had available to them, both made from Kellogg's, both made in the same, you know, um, Com uh, where uh, yeah. factory, I guess. Yeah. And some of the comments were, you know, if they're coming out of the same same factory, uh, why are they so different? Yeah, that's the same okay. over in India, um, in third world countries as well, Jackie. That McDonald's and um, Coca Cola and things like that, their um, ingredients in their products are different for those countries. Than what they are yeah. from America, than from Australia. Yeah. yeah, it depends on the food legislation, I think. Yeah, you know, definitely. Yeah, on what is allowed and what's not allowed. Absolutely. Country. Yeah, absolutely. But, but but the American ones, just on Fruit Loops. I mean, you could just see by the packaging was very similar. Yeah. Um, the color, the coloring for the American ones was so much brighter and vibrant, and you know, Australians was a little bit more duller. But the ingredient list was nearly triple, I reckon. Yeah, that's wow. Massive. Yeah. That's, well, I mean, food colouring's banned in Europe now. Yeah. yeah. They don't feed that crap to their kids. <laughs> yeah. no. Let's all move there. 
Yeah, I'll be honest, I'm not because I'm losing, I'm losing battery here. It's going to go. Yeah, about, me too. Uh, you need to go to bed, Nick. Go to sleep. Right. Bye. We'll talk again. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> See ya. Um, yeah. Well, in um, in Australia and I says I'd say it'd be all Western um, places. They have what's called grass, generally recognised. Maybe you would have heard about it, Christine. Generally recognised as safe. So, and that 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 is a term, I suppose, that the food companies govern themselves. So, if a food product or a pro any product cleaning products whatever if, if they can get it under the generally grass generally recognized as safe they don't have to put it on the label no they have, yeah now they have to um every ingredient everything that's added to a product has to be on the label not grass or well, uh, maybe australia is different i'll have a look into that because yeah. in america they don't have to so oh, in probably not in America, but in Australia, uh, if if you add it as part as an ingredient into your product when you make the product, able. Okay, I'll have a look because I be, I yep. thought I looked into it, but I'll look again because I could be wrong, and maybe you too. Just in what because you're in the industry, just have a look at that grass and just see what you come up with as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. How are you going, Jackie? Are you having dinner tonight? Um, I am. What I've got you? sweet potato and beans. Like I cut half a sweet potato, uh, baked half a sweet potato. Yeah. Um, chickpeas and chick peas and uh, um. Uh, black beans and red beans. Yeah, uh, I've had this. And I'm just looking for a sauce of some sort. <laughs> I just use chilies. Oh, yeah. and um, yellow. Yeah, and I've got yellow capsicum as well. Yeah. Oh, there's there's a spud shed that just opened up the road from us today. I didn't realise that it had just opened. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Oh my god, I've never seen anything. Uh, yeah. like, it was amazing. There was. Uh, and I kid you not, and I like to tell a good story, I kid you not, there was <laughs> cars banked up either side of the shopping centre for a block on both sides of the street just to go to a fruit and vegetable shop all day. He's, he's, yeah. giving, away like, he's giving away like 10 tonnes of potatoes, though. I know, but it's like a bag of potatoes. What you had to do? Like, <laughs> That's 10 tons. Come on, that's a lot of potatoes. <laughs> well, they, well, I reckon they went today. I was like, oh my God, it was like, must be Armageddon because we're like that. Yeah. <laughs> when, he, when he opened Jandicott, it was like the same too. Oh, so he liked yeah. his, and every now and then, he just, yeah, he'll give away bags and bags of potatoes yeah. if he's got too much. Amazing. I was, I was really just dumbfounded me that that, that, that knee, that shop, that shopping. I was like, how can it be that all of these people come out just for food? I mean, great, yeah. but I just went, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Like there's not a shop 20 metres down the road. Yeah, yeah. There's something in it where I just, but, wow. But Spud Shed is well known, or like has got a pretty good reputation for, yeah. you know, Good pricing and stuff like that. So maybe they're just sick of yeah. going to Jandicott or somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was yeah. full of wogs. There were wogs everywhere. Yeah. I could have been oh, in yeah. oh, Italy. <laughs> I reckon there was wogs and one was yelling at me and this old man was yelling at me. And, oh, okay. <laughs> just, I go to the Jandicott one that's full of Asians. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was, like I said, when I walked, because I did go in there later in the afternoon and the prices were, like I said, 50 cents for the... I know, so cheap. Yeah, so cheap. So, um, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Mm, it's really, yeah. really good. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, do you want, do you want me to give you a buzz tomorrow, Christine, and check in on you? You feel pretty good with your, where you're headed? Um, yeah, I feel, I feel pretty good actually. Yeah. Good. Uh, but yeah, it would, yeah, it would be nice actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, just, 
And just keep an eye to check. Yep. Yeah, just check, because, I mean, Jackie and I checked in for a fair while, didn't we, Jack, each day? Just, just good, I yep. think. <laughs> oh. you know, so, but some, I, that, some days you need it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, I would say expect it to be hairy tomorrow and the next day. Yeah. So really, you yep. know, whether you put some time aside tonight or in the morning, and I definitely think from what I do know of you is to maybe set that time aside that if you are going to break your fast, that you sit for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Sit for yep. 20 minutes, half an hour, and really make that conscious choice to yeah. either continue fasting or break. Because, um, like, it might mean, like, for me, it might, I tell everyone what I'm doing, and then it might mean for me it's going, I'm not cooking dinner tonight, I need to go to bed because it's the only way I'm going to get through. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I just judge that on, well, does Mary Jane re actually need me more than I need to do this thing for myself? So yep, I know yep. Jackie's, you know, Jackie's had to pull out a couple of times because she just hasn't been, you know, hasn't been able to be there for Finn in the way she wants to be. So the better thing to yep. do is to eat. Yep. Yeah. And you will, it will be, it will, you will have tough days and you'll have headaches and, um, you know, you'll feel a bit ugh. Um, and yep. if you can, just... I mean, I wasn't able to. I mean, I, when I did it the first time, um, I was at work and I work on a computer all the time. So I got to about 10 o'clock and I just had to go home and I slept. I slept for six hours Yeah. You know, in the middle of the day and I had to rewrite, set my alarm so I'd actually go and pick up Flynn from daycare. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, I just, I just crashed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but yeah, that, if you're able to do that, just have a sleep and, you know, a bit of a nap or whatever or go to bed for the night or, you know, even if it is 7 o'clock in the, at night. Yeah. Because yeah. the sleeping too, Christine, is your body's, your body's recovering. Yes. You're doing yeah. stuff. So, I mean, even if you're able to, because you do a bit of driving, I would even just go, right, I'm going to pull over and have a snooze for half an hour. Mark up. Yeah. You go down a little bit, have a little rest and then go on for your day because the more rested, you, the more emotionally balanced I am, the more likely my fast is going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Um, good. Yeah, it's good. Good stuff. Yeah. And when you get through the three days, you have basically used up all of that that I was saying, all of the sugar, all of the glycogen that's in your blood and that's in your liver, more than likely, very close to Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you're starting from a really good spot to reset your body. So really, okay. I would I would suggest that you again really head really head towards your unprocessed carbs. So as much as you can, don't eat too many breads. And if you are eating bread, eat the bread that you're making. But I would really say I find I, I get really lean really quickly when I just, for me, it's things like sweet potatoes, pumpkins, parsnips. So plants basically like dust in their plant form. And then if I start eating um, heavier things like rices, I don't eat pasta, but if I was to eat pasta, my body anyway doesn't get as lean on those things. But if okay. I just eat yep. sweet potatoes, um, pumpkins, and, and I'm talking like tonight I had a whole half a butternut pumpkin, so there's a still a fair amount, and then a big pile of vegetables and lentil loaf, a slice of lentil loaf. It was a full plate, like a full big plate of food. So that is a way that you um, because they're really um, calorie light. Plants are calorie light, but they're full of fibre, so they fill you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's good. Really good tips. Yeah. And if you do struggle, give me a call or flip me a message because sometimes it can just be that touch of base to just be able to maybe voice or just say, I'm wobbly, and then all of a sudden it's because out of there maybe it's, it, it's, it's not so bad. Yeah. yeah. Because Christy will distract you by talking to you. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> um, no, Jackie, that's actually, Christine will probably have a laugh at that because I was been listening to Christine Myers, Jackie, and, she, and I laughed because I went, oh, I think I'm a bit like that. She goes, this woman, she's, she's a fantastic talker, and she goes, I, you know, she was basically saying, I talk fast and I talk loud and I talk a lot. So that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I laughed and I went, oh, that's, it. that's what I do. <laughs> I talk a lot. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, she'll, so, she'll talk you out of eating before you realise it. <laughs> you know, I've just said, right, I need to stop. Because I always bag myself because I'm sometimes, you know, like when I'm talking, I'm talk, 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 talk. Like, yeah. Oh, shut up, Christy. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes there's some really good stuff that comes out of my yap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Are you in bed now, Christine, ready for sleep? Yes, I'm ready for sleep now. <laughs> well, yeah. just meditate on some on a smooth day tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And really listen to everything that's going. And I would suggest one, because you're in this environment. No, maybe notice all of the food signals around you. Yes. And see how it yep. makes you feel. You know, you see Coca Cola or you see a bag of chips. Because I mean, I don't eat that stuff. I've been eating that stuff for ages. Yeah, I can still see it. And I go, oh, it's really clever. Mm. That's good. How come you're still black, Jackie? Oh, I haven't worked out how to change it back yet. Eh, oh well. I'll have a look later. I I had my pitch up before, but there's no sound, so I don't know whether it's interconnected on this one or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it worked fine the other day, so I don't know. Yeah, might just be nice. So, oh. Well, I'll check in with you tomorrow, Christine, just to see how you're travelling. No, I'm just, yeah, see how you are. You still on? No, nah, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might be cutting out, I think, Christine. I'm here, Christian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, it's Christian home. Yeah, Christian is doing something with the sound on the TV. I have no clue how that works, but anyway, he's messing. <laughs> okay. I can hear you now again, but very quiet. Christian? No, anyway. I <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> nah. How is that possible? All right, I'm going to have to go and feed this kid before he goes to yeah. bed. All right, Jack. Um, oh, thanks for that. Um, I ended up getting almost two of those because I got one from Mary Jane as well. Um, two of those bracelets for Oh, really? Oh, yeah, on, yeah. They were go well, I had a quick look because I thought oh, I might grab another one. Okay. But they were going so no, fast, eh? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Well, I just no, I sort of went maybe within the hour that you gave me that. So thanks for that. That was good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what's going to go. She's going to do something else, so I don't know. Yeah. She's had a bit of trouble with that because um, she's been uh, sued, like cease and, dis cease and dismiss or so cease and stop or I don't, I don't know what it's called by an American company. Uh, I don't know what's happened with the sound now anymore. I can't hear you anymore, so I might have to leave. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Sleep you well. so much. If you yeah. can hear me, I don't. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> oh, whew, why just us now? <laughs> uh, um, yeah. All right. How have, you, how have you been? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Been a couple of rough, rough days at the beginning of the week, but we're all right. Mm. Couple of days with uh, wrapping paper. No, no, yeah, wrap butcher's paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jackets. 
That's a lot. Uh, he had an he, he had an incident at daycare where one of the one of the carers picked him up and squeezed him. He was throwing a tantrum and wouldn't wouldn't go to school, wouldn't get on the bus. So she uh, picked him up, squeezed him. He reckons he couldn't breathe, and so she's been stood down. Oh, Jackie. Yeah. So I don't know what to say because I just think. It's, oh, I, don't, I don't even know how to make this make sense, but sometimes I wonder if, and this probably will come out, I'm just going to say it because I don't mean it as mm. harsh as what it is, but um, sometimes I wonder if Flynn just is one of these kids that's easier to be picked on. Yep. You know, like just the kid to blame, sort of like Jack, you know, it's just like, well, let's just blame that kid. Let's just, or, or, or it doesn't take him, he's sensitive, so it doesn't take, him much to get going for lack of way of putting it and then he gets told then he's the naughty kid yeah and that's pretty much what 